Starting from first breath till 28 days of life, they are called newborn. And the fact is, even if they cry, they do not produce tears. So today's video is all about neonatology, newborn history taking, and many facts of newborn. Do not skip anything. Watch till end. Let's start learning. Hi, I am Dr. Triya Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist. I'll be your guide for pediatric subject. If you are new to my channel. Please do subscribe and give like to this video because many things is going to happen for pediatrics on this channel. So as we already told that starting from birth till 28 days of life, these tiny creatures are called newborn. The history taking of newborn is really different from the pediatric history because most of the things are related to maternal warm. Newborn history is really incomplete without the history of mothers. So it is very important and it is integral part of newborn history. How do we classify the newborn? First of all, we learn that neonate is from birth till 28 days of life. Now, one of the important classification of newborn is as per the gestational age. Gestational age means how old they are. In a very simple terminology, in obstetric and gynecology, we call it as a month of amenorrhea, but it is not applicable to the newborns. In a newborn, we are always going to talk gestational age in reference to weeks. So here we are talking about weeks. If the baby is born before 37 weeks of the gestation, we call those baby are preterm. And these babies are vulnerable for many of the problems and complication starting from 37 to 41 week we call them full term baby so any baby who are born between the age of 37 till the 41 weeks of gestational age they are all called full term babies now what about post term babies the babies who are born after the 42 weeks of the gestational they are called post term babies now a very important other classification that we should know is as per birth weight Low birth weight babies are called when the birth weight is less than 2.5 kg or 2500 grams. When the birth weight is less than 1500 grams, it is called very low birth weight. And it is called extremely low birth weight babies when the birth weight is below the 1 kg and that is 1000 grams. Now you must be wondering why this kind of 2-2 classifications are there. Because many a times the gestational age assessment is very difficult for the a peripheral health worker who are working in in a grassroots level but this is very obvious one has to see the weight of the child if the weight is less than 2500 grams it means the child is having low birth weight and likely to have complex complication in upcoming few days if the weight is 1500 grams that baby has to be under the observation for follow-up feeding and watch for the complication by the angadwadi worker or asha worker and if it is less than 1000 gram the child has to be referred to the higher center so by looking at the weight even if they don't have a knowledge of the gestational age they can take a, a judgment or a, a initial step diagnosis for the refer referring the child to the higher facility so this is very important in context to the peripheral health worker second important classification is by the weight appropriate to the gestational age SGA, AGA and LGA, AGA or AFD, both are same term, appropriate for date, small for date or IUGR or large for date as well as large for gestational age. This I am going to explain in detail in next slide. Look at the, this chart. Once we decide the gestational age of the baby that is done by either last menstrual period and counting of EDD or else by USG of first trimester of the mother or else it could be done by the physical assessment of the newborn. Once we say that the gestational age of the child is 37 weeks but if the child's weight is below the 20, this is the 2 kg line. So if the child's weight is below the double two five zero, it means child is below the 10th centile and we are going to call this child is IUGR or small for date so we need to have a two parameters one we need to know the gestational age of the child 
as I already discussed by which three important parameters and weight of the child. After we have these two parameters, we have to plot this value on the chart and if the value is below the 10th and 90th centile, we are going to call this child appropriate for date or a appropriate for gestational age. If this weight is beyond the 98 centile, suppose 37 weeks and if we are having the baby's weight more than 3200 grams as per this chart, then it could be large for date. So here the centile is totally different. It is not 3rd or 97th or anything else. It is 10th and 90th centiles. Many a times question is asked from this MCQs. So, please pay attention between 10th to 90th and 10th centile, it is called appropriate for gestational age. So, now we will be able to understand this slide. If the weight of the child as per the gestational age between 10th and 90th centile, it is called AGA, less than 10th centile for GA is called SGA or IUGR or SFT. If it is more than 90th centile, we are going to call that child is having large for gest. Uh, last for gestational age so we are not going to decide AGA SGA or LGA by just looking at the weight of the child we need to have a corresponding line for gestational age these all babies are term I mean full term baby they are all between 37 to 41 weeks but look at their weight this child is 1.8 kg and he's having SFD this child is 4.4 kg and he's LFD and this child is appropriate for date. So what are the component of uh, newborn histories? Many a times medical students are very much fumbled when they are appearing for exam, particularly a short case of newborn. So this, is, this uh, lecture is particularly for them because I am going to give a detailed guideline how to take a newborn history. The component of newborn history is first particulars of the baby, chief complaint, take origin duration of the progress for the complaint of the baby then the integral part of the newborn history is maternal history which is obviously divided in antenatal history intranatal history and postnatal history medical past history of mother family history of the baby and the sibling history as well as one last point is immunization history so what are the particular of the baby we all know these particulars of the patient remain same for all the uh, history taking whether it is a medical patient or a surgical patient or OBGY patient but few of the important points which is in reference to newborn has been covered here in detail. Name of the child, age of the child, gender, consanguous or non-consanguous marriage this is a particularly in reference to pediatric history. Religion of the patient, education, occupation and residence of the parent to decide the socio-economic class. Here two important points I would like to emphasize is first of all do not write mother's name like I am presenting a, a history of 25 years old so and so female 25 years old is not a part of pediatrics so the name and age should be in reference to the baby baby of X, X, XYZ mother age of the baby the first important catch point is here age of the newborn for first three days that le less than 72 hours of life should be always in hours and if the child is more than three days old it should be always in days because every single hour is very important for the newborn consanguous and non-consanguous we are going to discuss so first of all your opening statement should be i am presenting a case of if it is a less than 3 days old, 28 hours old, 48 hours old, 34 hours old child or 4 days old child, female Hindu newborn named. Here we are going to na write a named baby of XYZ, father name ABC, surname EFG, whatever it is, right? Born by consanguous or non-consanguous marriage. Consanguous marriage, if it is present, then we need to mention the degree. Primary consanguous, second degree or third degree consanguous marriage. Whose parents are educated up to? If they are educated, you have to write that primary education, secondary or they are graduate 
or they are illiterate by occupation they are laborer office worker or a, if whatever they are doing they are doing business they are doing private practice whatever you can write here residing at this place these three things are very important for us to decide the socio economic status of the child and belong to upper middle upper lower middle 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 upper whatever classification they are falling whatever classification you have considered modified prasad or kufu swami classification so this will conclude your opening statement so what is consanguous marriage consanguous marriage is a union of individual having a common ancestor it could be a first degree second degree and third degree first degree is called when the brother and sister are getting married whose parents are same second degree is called whose grandparents are same and third degree is great grandparents are same so this could be divided into first second and third degree consanguous marriage why do we need to know because in a consanguous marriage autosomal recessive disorders are very much common once you will see that uh, i have asked the history of consanguous marriage because uh, autosomal recessive disorders are commonly seen among them then the next question will come like boomerang what are the diseases which is transmitted by autosomal recessive gen- genetic disorders so you sh- you should know four or five diseases at the tip of your tongue because these are very common things which is asked in exam metabolic cystic fibrosis phenylketonuria galactosemia homocystinuria gsds hematopoietic sickle cell and thalassemia endocrine congenital adrenal hyperplasia skeletal alkaptenuria nervous system phadrix ataxia and sma the list is very long but i have taken only few diseases you can also remember any diseases which are under this category at whatever you like to remember and it is easy for remember remember those few diseases for viva questions so now after having a opening statement we are going to go towards the chief complaint so what is a chief complaint so again the statement should be my my baby or my patient presented on first hour of life second hour of life or a whatever t- day day 3 day 4 1 2 3 we are it is the this history should be in the language of mother so whatever mother or informer so whatever history relatives or accompanying person is giving we have to write that in that language if they are saying that on the first day of life then here it will be first day if they say on the sixth hour of life then it should be in hours okay so presented on this day with a chief complaint of whatever it is it could be a yellowish discoloration refusal to feed seizures seizures excessive crying lethargy failure to pass urine and stool breathing problems anything chief complaint should be anything sometimes in exam you will not have any kind of chief complaint because you will be given a case who is normal so you can write down my patient is not having any complaint at present taking feeds normally and is passing urine and stool adequately if there is some complaint like jaundice here in this patient there is a jaundice so we need to ask from when on which day did you notice what was the time since it is present and how does it progress what was it there since uh, since the time of birth at the time of the birth or after that it appears everything which is given to verbally told to you by the relatives or mother has to be taken into the that conclude newborn history part 1 i hope you all understood well and learned well rest of the things will be covered in part 2 so stay tuned for part 2 of newborn history till that time take care of yourself study hard as well as study smart bye